Well, since no one signed up for special music, I'm not going to sing a solo. My singing would be like Jack Benny's violin playing, I think. (laughs) If you know what that is. You know, I brought a bottle of water and it's mostly gone, so if I start dancing, (laughs) um, we're not Pentecostal. Well, it seems two preachers were standing at the end side of the road with a sign saying the end is near. Oh, wait, no, we did that one, didn't we? (laughs) Well, that guy that drove off the cliff, or off the bridge, because the bridge was out, he had a brother that went out to uh, 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 Texas and went to a place and rented a horse. And and the guy was telling us, as well, if you're going to rent this horse to ride, there's some things you need to know about it. He says, in order to get it to go, you need to say, thank God, and that'll move the horse forward. And the more you say, thank God, the faster it'll go forward. And he says, and if you want it to stop, you got to say amen. So he says, okay, I, I think I can remember that. So he gets on the horse, and he starts riding around, and here comes that cliff again. So he, comes, he sees the cliff off in the distance, and you know, he gets riding the horse saying, you know, thank God, thank God. He's having fun. Thank God, thank God. You know, he's having fun. And he sees the cliff, and he's like, oh, what did he say? Whoa, horse, whoa. And the horse doesn't stop. And he says, oh, I can't remember what I was supposed to say. Stop, horse, stop. And the horse keeps getting closer and closer and closer to the edge of the cliff. And finally he says, oh, I remember what it was. Amen, amen. And the horse just stops right at the edge of the cliff. And he says, oh, thank God. All right, well, tonight I'm going to talk about Saved by the Blood, and since we don't have any singers tonight, maybe we'll get out of here a minute or two earlier. So, uh, Saved by the Blood of the Cross, that's very important to include the cross, and not just any blood can save us. So my goal tonight and, and next week is uh, to help us maybe understand more about the blood of the cross and about the blood of Christ. So before I get started here, let's go to open in prayer. Lord, I just... I come to you and I, I thank you for what you do in my life and don't do. And Lord, I just uh, be with me tonight. Fill me with your spirit and help me to say what uh, you've laid on my heart here. And I, I pray it'll, it'll touch the, uh, someone in here. And, and if, if, if there is anyone here tonight that's not saved, just I, I pray this be the night that uh, uh, they, they seek you, that uh, they know they got to have faith in your blood. And maybe they can have a good understanding of that tonight. And Lord, just... Uh, uh, be with us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, I took all my pins back. That's all right. Uh, it's my, more of a pointer than a pen. <laughs> it helps me remember where I'm at with things. But I got, I got one of these. God gave me one of these. So, yeah, I, you know what? I think I am because it, it helps me check things. I had a pen earlier, and I left them all in the sound booth. That's what I was going to do. I said, well, maybe I can preach from the sound booth. Just have everybody get up, move your pew around, and face back. But that wasn't going to work either. So the, the blood of the cross and about the blood of, the, of Christ, our Savior, and, and uh, uh, we can understand that and, and understand the blood's true connotations and get a greater appreciation for what Christ has done for us. and uh, If you want, you can follow along here. I'm going to start out with uh, 1 John uh, 2, 2, and talk about the appropriation. That's 1 John 2, 2. Says, and he is, the appro- he is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And appropriation is an appeasement, appeasement is an atonement, and atonement is the act of correcting a wrongdoing, a process of repairing a damaged relationship. And I would brought this verse uh, on a Wednesday night and tried to get us to understand what it means by the whole world and and. You know, it's the whole world is who is um, 
those of us that have been born now, those of, that have not been born yet, that before he raptures us out of here or we uh, just die naturally, uh, he, he's, he's uh, our appropriation. So it's for everyone that enters into uh, the world And it, so the whole world does not mean who happens to be on the world at that time, uh, uh, be on the earth it's at the time of his crucifixion. This means one's born, past, present, and future. So he died for us uh, when we were yet to be born. Christ died for, for, and he died for those yet not born. So Christ took our punishment by being our advocate and only one that could meet God's demands of a sinless sacrifice. So if we had appropriation, we had forgiveness. And if we have appropriation and forgiveness, we have salvation. So by what means then could I be saved? Well, I'll do a very uh, uh, verse that probably is familiar to a lot, which is Romans 3.25. Romans 3. 25, it says, For whom God has set forth to be appropriation through, catch these next uh, four words here, faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So through faith in his blood, very simple. No one has appropriation or forgiveness or salvation unless they have faith in his blood and the blood of Christ. We are not guiltless, just pardoned. Uh, because of the blood of God's precious lamb, uh, we will never suffer the, the flames of hell. We will never come under the fiery wrath of God. So as Christians, we should not only be, we should not be sitting on our hands, we should be raising our hands in praise. So, and this blood shedding sacrifice is so important so look at 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. It says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold uh, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So uh, I was thinking of that silver and gold, we cannot buy our salvation. So uh, it doesn't matter how much money we put in the offering or tithe. I know Harold's been talking about that, that has nothing to do with our salvation. It's, it's, those are commandments of what we're supposed to be doing. So uh, don't get that confused with your salvation. But it is a commandment. So, and God set that up, as Brother Harold has adequately said, God set that up to support the local ecclesia, to pay the bills, pay the pastor. And that is biblical. We need to support our pastor. And we need to make sure our pastor has everything he needs, not everything he wants, but everything he needs. Our pastor should never be in need for anything. So, um, but we also need to uh, make sure uh, that we first are, are seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and his righteousness is Jesus Christ. So Jesus not only had to shed his blood to save us, he also had to die. So Matthew 26, let's go over to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 26 and through 28. This is a familiar verse that we have at communion time. And, and Jesus gave the first communion and listened to a lot of important things here. And, uh, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of the remission of sins. So he was already telling the disciples there what's coming up. He not only had to shed his blood, he had to die. And, in, and what, not only die, shed his blood. So I want to make sure he had, I purposely said those backwards because I want you to understand what Jesus had to do for us. So he himself tells us what he, what he had to do. And don't let anyone try to tell you differently that it was just his death. So there's some Bibles out there that have replaced the word blood with death. And there's a big difference between blood and just death. So uh, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15.3. First Corinthians 15, 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So Christ died. If he had shed his blood without dying, he could not save us. If he died a death wherein he did not shed his blood, he could not save us. So again, it is very, it is his shed blood and his death that saves us. So any theology that teaches otherwise is a weak theology. So let's look at Romans 5, 6 through 11. Let's go back to Romans 5, 6 through 11. So we've got a lot here. So Romans 5, 6 through 11. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But look at verse 8 here. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than now, uh, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from uh, wrath through him. For if, if when we were enemies, with, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So as Paul writes here, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, we shall be saved from the wrath through Jesus Christ. He has procured or buy, bought up uh, that salvation for us by both shedding his blood and dying, but not only dying, uh, there, there would have, wouldn't have been any salvation for us if... I got white for it. If he had not stayed dead, so the resurrection was necessary. So Christ rose. So um, that's why Paul so also has verse verses nine and ten. So look at that again in Romans five. We're still here. Five, nine, and ten. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So Christ lives so every repentant sinner who will put their faith in him, trust in him, and him alone for their salvation. Uh, he, does not, he does that saving through the blood that he shed and the death that he died on Calvary. So look at Colossians 1, 20. Colossians 1, 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, 
By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So since he is fully God, and by Christ's death, God uh, reconciles the universe to himself. So if you're still in Colossians 1, look at the next verse, 21. And, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So he brings us back uh, that we have sinned against him uh, into a peaceful, uh, proper relationship with him. So now we'll look at uh, some things in the Old Testament about the importance of some of the shedding of the blood and the dying uh, where it was also important to God. So look at Exodus 12. So we'll go to Exodus 12. And we're going to look at 6 and 7. And it says, And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper doorposts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. So that's a familiar area about the Passover, and certainly the death of the lamb uh, was the issue. Um, Hard to eat a lamb that is still alive. So God told uh, them to kill it, and if the death of the lamb was not the issue, then they could have just bled the lamb and not killed it but that wouldn't do, they couldn't fool God. And if you've ever heard others talk about these verses in passing and say, you know, it was some death angel that came to earth and, and you know, looked for the blood on the doorposts and whatnot, you know, there is no death angel. It was God himself that came down and and, and did that. And it was important to have the blood on the doorpost, and it was important that the lamb had died and they had ate all of it. So, uh, and this was very necessary as the lamb's death. So if, if only the blood was on the doorposts and the lamb not killed, again, they're not fooling God, and by trying to, they would have been trying to do things their way. And our Bible, it is filled with ones trying to do things their way, and God either punishes them or kills them on the spot. You know, um, thinking there was Moses when he was told just to hit the hit the rock once, smote it once, he did it twice. So he got punished by not being able to see uh, uh, the promised land and stuff. So, and to the guys that you might have to help me out with this because I'm trying to. Remember here, the guys that built the cart uh, to haul, I think it was the Ark. Was it the Ark of the Covenant or something? Yeah. So again, all good intentions, but they were trying to do it their way because they thought they had a better way. And so uh, if they would have used the loops and and, uh, the raw staves through it, they would have been fine. I mean, they could have probably walked over any ground whatsoever and not had an issue. You know, God knew what he was doing. <laughs> so, um, also with the, the lamb and the communion, notice something here in Exodus where what he told uh, uh, them to do with the lamb. He said, eat ye all of it. And that's what we do with our communion. We say, eat ye all of it. So, some similarities there and uh, purposely there. Uh, so, That's what Jesus commands us to do. And in Exodus, they had to sacrifice their own. Now here's where this was laid on my heart and I'm trying to, and I wanna get this clear to everybody uh, with coming up here. So in Exodus, they had to sacrifice their own personal lamb and have faith in the blood that was posted on the door in the shape of a cross and they had to have faith that the, the death of the lamb and the blood of the lamb would meet 
uh, God's demands, and when God would see the blood, he would pass them over and not punish their sins. And if not believing in the death of the lamb or the faith of the blood, so I'm saying watch carefully how this gets worked in. For us, we have... We need to have a pleasing sacrifice before God. We must possess a lamb and not just any lamb. We need a pure, sinless lamb. And Jesus is that lamb of God. Jesus is a very special kind of lamb that God allows all of us to take ownership. And once we own this lamb, and by asking him in our heart, we now need to sacrifice this lamb. We have to kill it, and we have to have faith in the blood. And since this was already done 2,000 plus years ago, we still have to take ownership. But now uh, we need to do this by faith and believe that his blood and his death and his resurrection is what we need for salvation. So I'll go back to Romans 5, 9, and 11 again. says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So God did not come to earth to uh, condemn it. He came uh, to earth to, to, to save us. And by that, through him, we might be saved. So God knows our hearts. He knew the hearts of everyone since Adam and Eve. He knew when... Uh, when he was conceived by the Holy Ghost, religious men would kill him. So um, I'm actually wrapping things up here. Um, so don't be a religious by killing him in your heart. Uh, what, what he did for us, did for you, uh, he died, it was a gift and you can have that gift free and clear, and only Jesus can give it to you. I can't give it to you, no one in here can give it to you. So if you're here tonight and you don't have that gift, I beg, I plead, you know, ask for that gift. It's, it's a free gift. And just need to accept Christ and that his blood can save you and have faith in that. And that's what the rest of us have had to do. You know, we've called on the name of the Lord Jesus and the reason we're calling on the name of the Lord Jesus, we have faith in Jesus, but we're, what we're doing is we're having faith in that blood that he shed for us. And, and only you can do that for you. I, no one can. So the altar is a great place. If you can't make it to the altar, you can, in your pew, ask Christ into your heart. Or if you're here tonight and you just want to... Uh, Talk to the Lord, and maybe you got some things on your heart to, to reach out. So I'm pretty much wrapping it up, Adolf. So you can make your way up, and, and we'll close out. So it's a little bit about saved by the blood, and next week, Lord willing, we'll do justified by the blood.